Welcome, if you're new to my channel, I teach all things freight brokerage and sales. Hit that like button, subscribe to my channel for more updates on upcoming videos. And today's video is all things freight brokerage. Today's topic is going to be stop getting scammed by carriers and double brokering schemes. I, I, I'm inside the day-to-day -day operations of a freight brokerage company, and I will tell you that it is one of the largest, <laughs> largest troubles of my day is trying to vet carriers. Um, and there's a lot of tools out there that can help you, um, and we'll be describing some of those tools today. Um, but there's a lot that you need to do as a freight broker, especially if you're new in the industry and you're a startup. Um, there are things that you need to ensure that you are um, keeping your business outside of that situation. So let's just get into our, what is being scammed mean and or double brokering. What does it mean, right? Um, there's a huge scam cost that's upwards to 100 million annually. I believe it's even further than that um, because if I post a load recently from Ohio to Tennessee, um, you are absolutely going to, um, and I guess I have a typo here, it's actually 2021, not 2022, so sorry for that. Um, but I received in one 15 minute post, um, a 40, if not more, inbound phone calls, all from that Southern California area, Burbank, you know, Glendale area, um, 15 trucks, one inspection, 15 trucks, zero inspections. Um, it's just, and they've been in business for two years and they have no inspections and 15 trucks. That's, I mean, for those who understand how all that works, I mean, there is a scale every hour on the hour along every major highway in the United States. And how in the world are you going across country without ever being inspected and you've been in business for a year, okay? It's impossible. I could understand if you've been in business maybe a month, but there are some things that you have to do as a company to, to really understand how you could be putting your company at risk. Um, is double brokering illegal? Yes, it is. When the shipper just has not agreed to it, it's absolutely illegal. And so, um, Fake motor carriers will show one truck or large amounts of trucks reported on the FMSCA website, yet they're part of this alleged sophisticated network of load board scammers. So what they do is they get on these load boards, they search for loads, they call you, they pretend that they're a motor carrier, um, they p pretend that they're a legitimate company, and they pretend they have trucks, and then they use another freight broker company um, that's from their area, and there's a lot in the southern area. And down in the comments of this video, of this YouTube video, I will give you the two links um, of in the description and the comments on the first post. The links of these freight um, freight wave articles, um, so that you can really, you know, dive in. And there is a wonderful guy um, named How Joe Howard. Um, he is from a freight brokerage company who is a very small, he said he was a small means, but he's been keeping a hold of this list. Um, I too am going to reach out to him after I read this article. I came up with this idea. Um, I'm a big about getting up early. And after this week, I always evaluate what I'm doing and what I could do better. And having those phone calls come in because this is a lane that we've never used before. A lot of times I have a lot of dedicated accounts. Um, we don't use load boards at all usually, um, but this particular, you know, moment, we didn't have that lane built. And so we went out and posted it on the internet. I'll never do that again um, because it was a nightmare. So I'm sitting here at three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, right? And I'm now saying, what could I have done differently? How could I have done differently? Usually we lane build. Um, before we ever, you know, you know, go out there on the load boards in any way. But in this case, we had to, um, we had an opportunity. We wanted to take that opportunity. And in this market, more in this market, in a recession that we're going through, um, for those who know what we're, you know, high fuel costs and all these other things that are happening, 
Um, it's definitely going to be more and more rampant in this year, 2022. So I just want to share with you that we can do things as a freight brokers to ensure this from a company policy standpoint and by having the right software and the right tools and understanding, you know, how a safety and inspections and all these things come into play. So we're going to spend a little time digging a little bit deeper into that conversation and then keeping good records. What are you doing um, as a company to ensure that when calls come in that you're you're logging that information. I'm going to talk a little bit of what software I use um, to do that as well. Um, and we hope that this will be super, super informative to you and really begin to understand how you can build a carrier compliance department. If you do not know what a carrier compliance department is, um, follow me on my YouTube channel. And I do have a series um, on how to hire for your business. Um, and there's a two-part series that talks about different departments inside of a freight brokerage company. Um, and one of the biggest, best, I mean, company, you know, departments is carrier compliance. Why I say it's the biggest and the best is because you have to have the biggest, boldest, best people working in that department, whether you have one person or whether you have five people. If they do not know how to investigate, you're lost in the water. And I was laughing the other day. I was in a um, a company meet, meeting with my staff and 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 I said I should become a lawyer you know and and she started laughing she goes or a private detective right because you if you're clueless about what's happening out here you're going to land yourself in a situation that is negative what happens when a claim happens and you have no no way to validate their insurance and it was in a double or triple or even a quadruple broker scheme. What will you do as a company? Do you have the means to be able to go and leverage assets to bring in cash flow while that claim is being settled and while that shipper is holding funds? Think about that from that perspective. Not trying to scare you or put the fear factor into it, but that's a real scenario. Are you going to do your due diligence to ensure that your freight is not illegal, but legally brokered. Okay, so what are some risk factors that we're gonna discuss? Risk factors with trucking companies are one, they're less than a year old. They have high safety scores, failed inspections. So what does, where do you find that failed inspection? Well, there is a really cool website that brings all that information in which is called Carrier 411. I'm not sponsoring them. They're not part of this video. I'm telling you by experience. That's it. Um, it brings in all the information that you could ever want. I'm not going to show you what it is because that's their software. Um, they create that software for a fee. I believe it's about $99 a month. They do give you a 30-day trial, but you have to be a broker or a shipper. They don't allow dispatching companies or... God forbid, um, they don't allow um, carriers or anyone. They All they do is monitor brokers. And I'm sorry, carriers, excuse me. Um, they also monitor brokers as well, but they monitor carriers in their, in, their, in their performance. And they have something that is really valuable, which is called freight guard reports um, that show, you know, a discussion between the two people. And then you get to see both what the broker says about the carrier, and then the carrier has ample time to respond. They don't post it until the carrier, you know, either declines to respond or they give you a period of time to see if it's a legitimate, you know, discussion. All right. So obviously, this is a carrier, and you can see right here that the national average for inspection is 21.4, for the driver is six and the hazmat is 4.5. If the hour of service rating is above 50% in any of these categories, unsafe driving, crash indicator, hours of service, vehicle maintenance, controlled substance and alcohol, hazardous materials and compliance and driver fitness. If it's above 50% in any of these categories, I would say, that it is not a good idea, right, to double check them. It's not a good idea to 
to do business with them, right? Because anything that's over 50%, even your broker carrier agreement and your agreements with your shippers, um, if you have one with your shippers, they're asking for you to hire safe drivers. So why would you put an unsafe driver that has is notorious for running out of service? You're going to put your company in jeopardy. So don't do it. Just, you know, be safe, right? Be safe. So if your benchmark is 50% or your benchmark is 50%, um, let me go out. If, if you're above 80% from the FMSCA to the carrier, um, stating you're coming close to being in trouble with us. So why would you now risk your company um, with un an unsafe driver or um, one with me vehicle maintenance issues? So in this case, you'll see right here that they have the total inspections are 10 um, and the total SMS, you know, um, 10 and a total of crashes is zero. Um, and basically it gives you information about the overview of how many vehicles they have and how many inspections they have, okay? And so what I would recommend is, if I was to discuss that discussion, is to have um, a real policy in place of risk factors. But we'll get that in just a moment. Let's talk about um, if they have a high safety score, um, they have no inspections at all, they only have one truck, they have fraud alerts like we talked about for Carrier 411, um, they, ha they have a shell company, a shell company meaning that they're not legitimately a carrier. They have 10 trucks, but zero inspections. And I'm not going to, you know, I have to say this because this is free speech, um, but I'm not targeting Southern California, but they're notorious for high scamming. Area codes like 818-747-442. I get them, you know, lot, this week, this last week, I got so many, which is why I'm prompted to put this out here. Glendale, California, Burbank, Van Nuys, um, et cetera. Did that video blow your mind or what? So much information. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications.